Good morning. We noted last week that we are now in the season of creation and we continue to celebrate our young people. But we also in Heritage Month as a country where we continue to celebrate our diversity, our different cultures, but more so for me, in the act of worship, we celebrate that which brings us together. And central to that is the person of Jesus Christ, who today we will be reflecting on, asking ourselves, who is this Jesus to me? The Lord be with you. Pray the collect together. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the Messiah. Empower all who confess you as Lord to follow in the way of the cross and find in it the way of life and glory. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 8, reading from verse 27. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Jesus went with the disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, 
Get behind, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on the divine things, but on the human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them of the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. So may I speak in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the statements we often hear is that preachers will come to us and say, Have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If you haven't, come forward and we'll say a sinner's prayer with you, or we will give you a rule of life, or whatever the case may be. That's been a very helpful statement. But I want to suggest today that when someone is asking you if you have received Jesus as Lord and Savior, they perhaps are asking you if you have had an experience like their own. And oftentimes we say no, because all I'm saying is, well, maybe I don't know Jesus like you do. And therefore, there is no reason for me to feel any inferior simply because I have experienced Jesus differently. 
I want you to follow me today. Because Jesus says in today's gospel, asking his disciples, who do people say I am? What he's asking there is of what they have seen and heard. How have they experienced me? How have they experienced what I do and what I say? And they reflect on it and say, well, like John the Baptist for some, like Elijah for some, like one of the prophets for others. Then Jesus makes it more direct and then you. Who do you say I am? We thank God for Peter who said you are the Messiah. But we are not going to concentrate on Peter's revelation. I want us to concentrate on ourselves. Because I've often felt that preachers and perhaps the church has constructed Jesus in a certain way that seems to suggest that unless you experience Jesus the way I do, your experience is invalid. There's just the one way. You need to have experienced Jesus only as Lord and Savior for that experience to be valid. That means if my experience of Jesus is as a brother and a friend, it's not valid because it doesn't fall into this construction that people have given. It appears to me that Jesus is interested in the personal experience of an individual. How do you understand me? And the way we understand Jesus is determined quite often by where we are coming from, what we know, what we don't know, the people around us. And Jesus, in my opinion, comes to be relevant to my context. Who Jesus is to me, how Jesus saves me, how Jesus manifests to me. Why is the same Jesus? Does not necessarily have to be the same with your experience. I think we have ended up with people faking their experience of Jesus because they've been told how to experience Jesus. And what I want to do today, and I hope I'm doing that already, is that in this sermon I want to validate your experience of this Jesus because often the experience we have is what our Sunday school teacher told us. It's what our preacher, our rector, our pastor, or whoever told us because they came and told us Jesus is this nothing else but Jesus is asking you not what your pastor said not what your priest says Jesus says who do you say I am Jesus is saying what is your experience of me outside of what you have been told by others outside of what you have heard I seek to know, who am I to you? And I think it, it helps us to pause, even in our adult lives, and think, whose Jesus have I experienced and lived out thus far? Is it the Jesus who means something to me, or the Jesus that was just given to me by other people and say, this is it, take it or leave it? Jesus seeks to be relevant to you directly. I want us to imagine that Jesus came to this earth just for you. Everybody else can imagine it for themselves, but just for you. And in that moment when you're imagining that, like, if he came here just for me, to do what for me? To mean what for me? So that I can do what about it? Because now, it's reduced to what this Jesus means to you. The communal, community Jesus is important because we seek unity. But oftentimes it's because the individuals in the congregation or the individuals in the community, in the family, have no idea what this Jesus stands for. Or they are not given an opportunity to reason it out for themselves. So there's nothing wrong with the model of Jesus as Lord and Savior. But Jesus expresses himself and is felt differently by other people. 
And therefore, we cannot be dismissive of these other things that Jesus is. The Jesus for others who are in deep poverty, something different. Jesus to the person who is going through abuse, violence, something completely different. The same Jesus in Afghanistan, the same Jesus in Zimbabwe, the same Jesus in Popomeni, the same Jesus in Umlazi, and Jesus in Hilton. It's the same Jesus. But what is, who is Jesus to these different people? We need to experience this Jesus at a very personal level so that Jesus is relevant. So ours is to share the good news but not impose our experience of Jesus on other people. We need to validate because Jesus seeks to be relevant. Jesus seeks to be meaningful, to have a relationship with the individual in their circumstances. So maybe, instead of simply saying, have you received Jesus as Lord and Savior? We should be asking, what is your experience of Jesus Christ? I'll share my experience with you. If it makes sense, maybe you can begin to experience your own. So that in that moment, you can also stand with the authority of Peter and say, I know Jesus for who he is to me. Yes, Jesus li tembalet In fierce days he brings peace to the land Jesus li tembalet Jesus li yaniso Jesus li yaniso When the nation is bound by the confused lies of men Yes, we are so. Yes, we can ya quit. Yes, we can ya quit. When our people are groping in darkness. Yes, we can ya quit. Yes, we can ballet. Yes, we can ballet. To break the yoke of oppression and set the captives free. Yes, we can ballet. Yes, we can ballet. You are our hope. Yes, we are You are the truth. Let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbour. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own faults in thought, word and deed and in what we have left undone for the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon our sins and set us free from them. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory. We Christ has come to us and has allowed himself to be nailed to a cross for our sake. Let us pray to God our Creator in the precious name of his Son so that we may be instruments of him who sent us. Loving God, thank you for giving up your Son to suffer and die on the cross for us and for all people. Thank you that we are able to look at the cross and see your love for us. Lord, help us to follow Jesus, bearing the cross of faith itself and the difficulties we experience because of faith. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for your church throughout the world. Help it understand the way you bring salvation through the cross. Help it to be patient as it struggles to remain faithful to the way of the cross. Help it live by faith rather than sight. And we pray for your mercy and strength to be upon our Bishop Gosnati together with Tabo, our Metropolitan, as they labor for your people in your church. By your Holy Spirit, lighten the load of the cross that they bear for us. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Guide the nations of the world to live at peace with one another and bring relief to those who are held captive and those that are oppressed. Have mercy on those in need, those who are struggling because of gender-based violence, and those who are suffering from harmful behavior and hurting relationships and despair. Help restore and renew, good Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for the sick, those who are disabled, those in hospital, and those facing death. Show them the light of the gospel. Provide helpers and carers and medical resources, and heal both body and soul. Meet the needs of all those who know personally and whom we now name in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank and praise you, loving God. In wisdom, you guide the course of the world and cherish us with your tender care. We thank you that we can come together around this table in the name of Jesus, your Son, the firstborn of all creation. In him, all things were created, visible and invisible and all things hold together in him. We thank you that you have sent your Holy Spirit to make us a new community of faith to serve you within your creation. And now we give you thanks because you have given the earth into our care and call us to praise you day by day for the marvels of your creation. And so with the wonders of creation and the songs of praise of all your creatures, both in heaven and on earth, we join in one great act of awe and adoration. creation, send your spirit upon the goodness of the earth and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that in them we may recognize and receive the fullness of the risen Christ, bread broken, wine poured, body given, blood shed. On the night he set a table with his disciples, and with them recall the wonder of your creation and the wonder of your covenant with your chosen people. He took bread gave you thanks, blessed it and broke it, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, he took the cup, giving you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. And so, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is now. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. As we remember the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, we celebrate the goodness of the earth, our companionship in this world, and the sharing of all skills and arts that enrich our lives. We share the cup of humanity matured over the unnumbered centuries of the long struggle that has gone into making of this world, our living and dying, our fears and our hopes. Together with those who have drawn substance from this soil, those with whom we share it, and those to whom we pass it on, we share this bread and raise this cup in fulfillment of the Lord's command. Through him, with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not the sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Friends, draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. This is the body of Christ broken that we may be whole This cup was promised by God to to his word Give thanks to the Lord, for God is gracious. God's mercy endures forever. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. In Jesus Christ our Lord, send us out into the world and the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. God bless Africa. Protect our children, transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore her dignity, and give us peace for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Go forth with the words of wisdom crying in your ears. Go forth with songs of hope singing in your heart. Know that you are called to be faithful followers of the one who will always be near you will always guide and encourage you to walk the path of life and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. And so go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Reconcile